Here we go, getting ready for a start. Race number three. Big field of cars, there is that vacant spot, left by right, on the fourth row, scheduled to start from position number seven, but not the case. A mechanical issue, clearly, hampering his efforts before the start. Have we got a green light or a green flag at the back? Yep, spotting it now. So Adam Poole's starts have been a highlight this weekend. He's been able to walk the car beautifully off the line in both races. Can he convert again and make it three from three? Milano will be tough to beat. And in this case, he doesn't get it right. Milano with a much better start. Paul Cruz position numbers four out the back. Follows Milano through and shooting the gap down the middle. It's Troy Lloyd having a big dip. And he's gone straight through to position one with a fantastic launch from the second row. Superb start. Looks like Cruz got the, a good start as well, that initial launch. But the heavily powered Commodores coming through and stealing back the position from him, so he remains in fourth position there as they go around turn two and turn three. Looks like Ian McLennan cut the grass at the back of turn two there, just forced into a position that he wasn't able to get enough purchase on the tarmac. They were cars all up the inside and everyone was trying to box each other out. Likewise, Dwayne Twist just trying to make sure he holds Richard Opie on the outside there at four, but Troy Lloyd, what a fantastic start. He's bolted Holtz, one, two, three, and four. Luke Rich Cumbo's had a really good start too. He's up four positions making it four holes in the top four. Here comes Rob Broad. Man who finished third at the recent Matthew Flinders Plate down in Phillip Island in November last year. He's had a pretty decent run, had a pretty quiet run actually through the field in all three races. He's passed Brad White on the opening lap. He's gonna set his sights on the back of the VK Commodore, the DLL Photography and Design Commodore, David Cox. Here they come to finish lap number one. Lloyd, Milano, pull the top three. Luke Rech Combo up to fourth position and quickly catching the three in front. And there's another one of the Commodores, Cade Lehman, who was one of the unfortunate DNFs in race two. He's had a pretty decent start from the rear of the grid, made his way right up into the mid-pack early. And that's Milano. Milano's around at turn number one. Has there been contact or has he done that all on his own? He's come out of position two and facing the wrong direction. He was half second ahead of Paul when they crossed the line, so you'd think with that kind of a margin that there wouldn't have been any contact in turn one. But we have to see what the damage when he turns around. Great smoke in there, we can see. Been a disaster. He's having to wait for the whole field to go past, and that's going to really hurt him in terms of the points coming out of this third race for the Victorian State Circuit Racing Championship title. So that frees up. Luke Gretsch Combo to go through into position three. He would have uh, not expected that after the weekend that he's had. Likewise, some of these guys not expecting to have the weekend that they've been had. Here's uh, Greg Piergross, the XE Falcon, holding off another one of the Ravage Raceworks prepared cars in Ian e. McLennan's Monaro. What a fantastic looking car this is now. Certainly is, and he's having a look into the final. Oh, I've got it all crossed up there into the final sequence of corners. He's lost a bit of ground. He's going to be vulnerable down the pit straight. But with that horsepower, he should be safe. Yeah, the early model car versus the late model cars behind. He should have the legs in a straight line to just pull away and hold his own in, gather it up, get the thoughts back together. David Cox has had a very, very nice weekend as it stands. Now, a couple of new tyres on that car earlier today. Just marked the car up nicely. And he's actually holding himself quite well here with Rob Braun crawling all over the back of him. Braun, he hasn't been able to find a way past just yet. So there's the live scoreboard as we can see Paul now within three tenths of a second behind race leader Lloyd Luke Rich Combo is catching, catching, catching. He's in third, 3.6 seconds behind. As they head. Oh no, we've got a change for the lead. Yes, we have had a change for the lead. We're just we're just a bit of a trying to make sure what exactly happened there. Troy Lloyd has been passed, and I'm not sure whether that was down at the bottom end of the course, down around turns two, three, and four, because the margin across the line was pretty narrow, but we didn't have a good shot to show us that it looks like it may have been done in the opening couple of corners. So Adam Poole, fastest lap of the race last time around, looks like he put that to good effect, and then he takes over the race lead, which is the top spot that he started from. Started poorly, and he's now back in position one. So finish lap number three. Pull fastest lap of the race and a very, very quick lap, that is. Here's Milano, the eyes on, and he's now in behind Wayne Twist. So he's recovered from that incident down at turn one. Now he's passing him around the outside through the kick, which is one of the
Valley in consequential corners here in Sandown. That's turn 10. And now on to 11 and 12. We have a look down the order to see where he is. That's down around uh, 20th, 19th, 20th place at the moment. So that has cost him a lot of time. And he'll be struggling to get back into the top 10 from here. Still seven laps to do it, so plenty of time to recover. I'm sure we'll see him much further up by the end of these seven laps. But as I said, just before Paul first was lap in the race on that last lap, including getting the lead 1.4 seconds faster than Lloyd. So that gap immediately has come out. So yes, Luke Rachel Combo, personal best on the last lap, four tenths faster than Lloyd. He's got 5.1 seconds off the lead. He's still there or thereabouts in the hunt. Is one of the other Nissans in the field, just the two. The other one belonging to Paul Cruz with Jamie Augustine there in the 155 being pursued by Kate Lehman in the 26. If it wasn't for the TCR round being postponed to Phillip Island, Jamie's car, the number 155 there, he would actually be down at Phillip Island. He does a lot of work for uh, TCR with writing all the software and bits and pieces that go on. So he's pretty thankful he's here and able to race this weekend. Put it himself quite well with short notice and pulled that car in the trailer. And very, very competitive in the midfield, just inside the top 10, actually just outside the top 10, he's just down to 11th place from the start. And uh, he's got his hands very, very full here with this Medigo door centre Commodore all over his rear wing right now. And having a look down the inside at turn two, and that's a nice firm move from Cave Lee. Well done. Room left there, that was good race craft from both of them. Room left, room taking. Away they go onto the back straight. Great variety of cars in this category. We can see on screen now BMWs, Audis from yesteryear, such variety up and down this superb group. A couple of uh, guys at the back of the pack here. So you've got Matt Lestrange, that's the BMW. Wayne Decker has changed the quality on his car in between years as well. I guess some of the cars have had a birthday over the, uh, the time off with COVID as well. And that car used to be black and silver, the Audi there. It's now got a uh, multitude of colours on it. A number of other drivers have also decided that they want to put a few new vinyl, a few new stickers and things on their car just to spend a little bit of time with them. And they had a lot of time off and I guess not so much money to burn, but a lot of spare time on their hands. These guys haven't got a lot of spare time on their hands right now because they've got their hands absolutely full. And that's uh, the two men from uh, rural Victoria, Bendigo uh, boys in Dave Cox and Kate Lee, good mates. And uh, Rock Horn has already found his way through. So somewhere Brawny's found an opening and slid it through. Dave Cox is starting to come a bit close to the back. Okay, Limit had a little bit of a slide there through turn one. They just hold it together. Great slide through there on the previous lap as well. He was able to set up the move at turn two. Unable to do so this time through. He'll look for the run down the back straight for turn number six. We'll see. Good exit from the preceding car. He's getting, I don't think he's going to be quite close enough. Let's see how much the newer car has a horsepower advantage as they head up the hill. The answer is not a lot. It looked like it was very close to the back of the, uh, the BK there heading up into turn six. Here's the sole remaining EA Falcon that's in the field. This is a uh, Marco Timperio. All the other EA Falcons have fallen off the road around him through various means this weekend. Cam McKinnon was out after race one. Stewie did and had an issue. And in the last race, we did see the, the number 71, the Orange Falcon, uh, up lap one with the bonnet flying up, coming out of this part of the course here. It turned out he actually had a bit of contact with another car with Mark Baldwin's Honda Civic, which broke one of the bonnet restraining pins, and then the other one just let go at speed. So all his mates have fallen away from him here, Marco Timperio. He's going to fly this EA Falcon flag proudly for the, uh, the remaining three or so laps. Absolutely. So as we look at the leaderboard, it's Paul that leads by 3.2 seconds over Lloyd. Luke Gretsch Combo, he made his way through the pack early on, but he hasn't been able to catch the leading pair. The gap remains at five seconds between him and Lloyd. Cruz in third, sorry, in fourth position and Tonks rounding out the top five. It's a good visual illustration of the gap there between first and second. The lead is starting to come down fifth. Here's third, that was Luke Gretsch Combo. So giving you an idea of how much these cars are separated on track, that gap that we're seeing on our timing screen of being 3.2 from race leader to his man in second place is definitely not 3.2 seconds anymore. And David Cox just managed to kick away here a little bit from Cade Lehman because Cade's now just starting to pull back into the clutches of Jamie Augustine's Nissan. Brad Wyatt not too far away here either. 
Sorry about that. The field is spread out now. There's six laps, seven laps nearly to the race. Three laps to go. But there's still some great battle packs out there. Some very different vehicles. Look at these two. Can't get too much more different vehicles in horsepower. No, the uh, Monaro of Ian McLennan's going to have the straight line advantage here. Rob Braun was right there. He's got the corner pace. Just wondering whether or not there's the rear tyres of the traction on that pro cut tree services Monaro just starting to give up a little bit here Rob's really thrown the kitchen sink at it here right out over the curb at turn one sparks flying up the car yeah. bottomed out over the curb yeah but a bit like the muffler or the exhaust catch, catching on the curb as he slid over the back side of it you know he hasn't been able to get a good exit out of here but if he can just stay with Macca all the way up the back straight he might be in position to have a little bit more get to turn nine. There's a little bit of traffic here as well. Some of the back markers are just being woken up by the preceding cars that are just ahead of this pair. Neither of them have been able to get through by turn six. So down into turn seven, eight, and down into turn nine. Again, also unable to get through. Oh, this, is a bit, this is a bit awkward. So the traffic just holding Ian McLennan up a little bit here. Is that going to open the door for Rob Braun? Not on this occasion. They're a little bit tentative, sort of going over the top and coming down the hill. Good yellow flag down here. That's it. Uh, that's it. the last couple of corners, is it? No, it's... Yeah, it was. Yeah, they're the last couple of corners. Bit of an unusual camera angle, that one. Thought it would turn to a minute. And it was definitely the last sequence of corners as they come back across the line. Two more laps to go for these guys. The leaders came down around the back straight. They've only got one and a half left to go. It was the RX-8. Don't be off at the last couple of corners. That'll be what the yellow flag was for. Here's another debutante field this weekend, the, the Falcon. We've mentioned a few times. The car 164, Craig Piergross behind the wheel. He's uh, come out of Speedway, so he's had to get used to going in a straight line himself pretty well. He's going to have his hands with a couple of season campaigns behind him in the last two laps. Flags just out. That would be for Paul Chibots, who's just waving the field on by. The type of two leader cars here this weekend. Only one of two that's here. And he just waves them through. Does the right thing. The old accordion effect between these three. They close up down the Titan technical stuff turns two, three, and four, and then at this end of the track as well. But when they get to the straights, they seem to spread out. This is the closest McClellan's been now. Will he have a look into the final sequence of corners? In position here, Craig's just going to drive us down the middle of the road here, and that's a nice defensive line. Just left Ian McClellan no option on either side to make that pass, and he actually put a bit of a gap there, Craig, so... Very, very nicely driven. This is the battle for seventh position, seven, eight, ten, nine. As they cross the line now with one lap remaining. And they got the tenth place man there, Cade Lehman, very hotly pursued by David Cox. And here comes Milano. So Milano's recovered through the field, so he's caught the back edge of the top ten here. And if he wants to get a top ten finish, he's got to get a wriggle on. As this is, as you said, the final lap right out over the back side of the curb. Same two for Jamie Augustine. These guys are throwing everything at it in these last couple of laps for those last couple of spots, for those last few points towards your State Series points tally at the end of the season. As they head down the back straight one more time, looking for the leader. He Here he is, coming round. coming round, just tucked in behind a couple of the back markers. That's Wayne Twisted, he doesn't need to pass him before the line, but he does anyway, and it's a perfect trio of wins, a hat trick, if you call it for Adam Poole. Kate Lehman off the road at the back side of six and seven. And Damien Milano is right within striking distance here of getting into the top 10. Ian McLennan, here he goes. Can he get up the inside at the last couple of corners? No. Used all the curb on the inside and much more. Oh, the BMW oh. with a good exit, but sideways. And massive slide from both McLennan and Broad. So one had the slide, then the other had it in sympathy and the positions remained as they were, so. McLennan home for eighth, Braun for ninth. Milano gets home for a top 10 finish. So great recovery drive for Damian Milano after the incident down at turn one on lap two. So Adam Poole with a perfect weekend from his point of view in terms of uh, getting across the line uh, in three races in first place, despite the fact he had that penalty from race one yesterday. And then Troy Lloyd and Luke Gretsch Cumber, your top three in that one. Paul Cruz has had a pretty good weekend, so the Mr. Sylvia finishes in position number four.
Jared Tom's home in P5. Danny Time, what a great weekend for him. He's had a good debut weekend. Finishes P6 in that one. And likewise, Craig Piergross, P7 uh, in that one. McLennan, Braun and Milano, the top 10.